On today's episode of the Weekly Monster Truck Podcast, join Don Frankish and I as we talk about his amazing career. So strap yourselves in, mash that loud paddle, and get ready because it's time to jam! Hello and welcome back to the Weekly Monster Truck Podcast. Hi again everyone, I'm Jackson, also known as Monster Jammer Stone. You can follow my social media at Monster Jammer Stone on Instagram and Monster Jammer Stone on YouTube. If you've been paying attention to my social media and my Instagram and the Weekly Monster Truck Podcast Facebook, you would have known that a very special guest is on today's episode and I am privileged to be joined by Mr. Don Frankish. Don, thank you so much for coming on today's episode. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Glad to be on. <clears throat> so I have some questions that I have written uh, for you. We also have some fan questions that the fans wrote on Facebook and Instagram. I just want to very quickly thank the fans who left questions both on Instagram and uh, Facebook. I am really looking forward to an- uh, asking these questions, and I'm sure Don is looking forward to uh, answering these as well. So firstly, Don, uh, jumping into my questions, my first question for you is how did you get your start in the industry? Um, our family had always been really involved with truck and tractor pulls. Um, my dad had everything from a mini all the way up to a great big diesel super stock. It was about 1300 horsepower. Uh, as I grew older, we started building a four wheel drive modified, uh, truck uh shortly into it we switched to super modified which meant it had a blower on top you could really extend the wheelbase out and uh they were kind of the class in four-wheel drive that had way more power than anything else four-wheel drive um i got into that my brother he kind of followed right in behind he started doing tractor pulls and eventually bought a jet turbine tractor with a a turbine out of a huey helicopter in it it become quite a showpiece. It would shoot flames 25 feet in the air and, you know, a real crowd pleaser. Um, the more and more we went to bigger um, world stage type events with USA Motorsports and SRO and United States Hot Rod at the time, um, the more we mingled with the monster truck guys. Turned out to be a fun bunch. Um, we ended up being invited to an event in Hawaii and japan my brother took his jet over there and when he come back he owned the taurus truck um and i was always like well if he's got one of those i need one of those i got a bigger foot than he has so uh, (laughs) you're all right and uh it just grew from uh you know a weekend warrior fun hobby just like tractor pulling to uh you know this is what we do almost every week we're not farming and then eventually uh after we got rid of the farming aspect, it was full time for 15 years. All we did. Wow. And then uh, after just the way it worked with the border and the Canadian exchange, it got tougher to do from Canada. So that's when we kind of went with the full ride truck route and sold off the race equipment. And, you know, still glad to fill in when I can enjoy being behind the seat any chance I can get. But uh, it just, wasn't practical from up here anymore absolutely and uh some of some of the points that you brought up we are going to address later so i'm not gonna build upon that uh instead i'm gonna save that for later my next question for you don is what was the inspiration behind the maniac truck was there anything that influenced the name or the design or something like that um not so much the influence of the name and the design but the the caliber of name and how things stood out i guess i'd have to lean a little credit to bigfoot on that you know they built a name for a truck jeff dane built a name for a truck really fast it just had to be something that wasn't i guess kind of comical or whatever like there was you know some trucks that are 
a gimmick that way. They had a, a comical name. I, I, I preferred the more serious kind of race approach, harder name. And, you know, like some guys even preferred when we had no names and just numbers on the side of the truck. But uh, it just, it started in the pulling. It was on the pulling truck right from the get go and just carried on all through the years. There's sometimes I wondered if that name wasn't cursed the way we tore up a lot of motors sometimes and in monster trucks, but I think that come down more to the uh, people we had building them compared to what we used to have in pulling. Um, you know, the pulling guys were building way more power and and more serious stuff, and it just um, always seemed like there was a little issue with that. And then we got away from the Fords, and it wasn't a Ford thing; it was is an engine builder thing. But the Fords were a lot harder to have parts in stock for. Absolutely. And going back to what you just said, was it more like a, uh, going back to the name thing you said, you wanted something serious. Was it more like you wanted something iconic? Because when you think of Bigfoot, yeah. obviously you think of the the truck. Well, at least yeah. for us, when we think of Bigfoot, we think yeah. of the truck. Fair yeah, it was just something to stand out um, as a solid name, something that would last just, you know, would last through the years, I guess, no matter what we did with it. Absolutely. My next question, this is going to be a real blast from the past. So, uh, Jurassic Attack and Maniac, along with several other monster trucks, was featured in the movie Rat Race. How did that opportunity come about, and what was that experience like? Uh, it came about through a, a studio got a hold of us. They'd been talking to a few other teams up here, and we were a pretty close knit bunch at the time. Um, so we all knew what each other's offer was and, and how it worked. And I'd done quite a bit in uh, some Hollywood stuff before and commercials and that. So, you know, we had to get involved with the uh, stunt union side of it just so we could guarantee some better pay. And uh, it, it, it come together really easy. Um, they needed a lot of trucks and we were able to provide that between the, four teams that had trucks up here and then um it was a it was a long weekend for us we actually started filming 6 a.m on uh monday morning and we had a race sunday night in winnipeg and that's about a 13 hour drive in a semi wow. and uh, so we and i remember is back when we were just starting to deal with vans and buses and stuff and our, you know, me and Lindsay, we didn't back around from back down from anything. So we went out there Sunday, just like any other show, and we're hitting the vans and tearing stuff up and then piled it in the trailer. We had a couple drivers to help us get it back. Uh, got there at six in the morning, set up and, and shot for four days straight. And then uh, they ended up calling us back for, there's one scene in that movie where it looks like there's about 40 of us. That's the same trucks twice, just in different spots on the track. But we actually went back for one extra day for that two seconds of screen time. It's, I, I guess they just, with movies, you got to pay attention to those small little details. And speaking of which, uh, for those who are watching on YouTube, I'll definitely put some screenies up on screen, especially of... Uh, the uh the scenes with maniac and or i should say the uh still shots of jurassic attack and uh maniac and uh, kind of going off of that question i don't have it listed here but did when you watch the movie back and you watch that scene back were you quite satisfied with the end product or were you not really phased by it um it was pretty much what we expected we uh you know we rehearse it before we'd shoot it. So we'd rehearse it in a regular pickup and uh, we knew what their plan was. It, it was just all meant to be comical and it was a great time. Uh, one of the most memorable parts of shooting that was uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. was on set and his kids were big monster truck fans at the time, he said. So uh, like I say, we had tore some stuff up the night before Jurassic Attack and that whole shoot only had front wheel drive. So if you just barely touch the throttle, you could roast them front tires. Well, we stuck Cuba Gooding Jr. in a fire suit, stuck him in there, and 
he just mashed the throttle and lit it up like a top field dragster. <laughs> but uh, it, it's funny because that would have been one of the coolest scenes for the uh, behind the scenes clip of that movie. And they didn't use any of that stuff. There's so much cool stuff that took place that never, never did see anything but the cutting room floor. I, I personally would have been, I would have loved to have seen that. Uh, going off of the Jurassic Attack thing, you're going to kind of see a theme going here. Uh, in 2007, you drove Jurassic Attack in Cardiff, Wales. And not only did you win Freestyle, but you were nominated for the 2008 Save of the Year. That save was extremely awesome. If you had have watched the uh, promo video that I put up on my Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, in your mind, was this a huge achievement and what did, or what does it slash what did it mean to you? Uh, for me, it was just a great opportunity, um, to get to go over to Europe and drive. Um, we were using one of Feld's chassis at the time, so I wasn't overly familiar with it. We were, we were setting it up cautiously just to land nice. You know, we weren't out there to win racing. We just didn't have a low enough uh, ride height to win it. But um, it was fun to go over there, compete with all the big names, you know, beat guys like Tom Metz and Freestyle. A lot of people can't say they've ever done that. Um, I was known more for the Maniac truck at the time. That's the one where I felt at home and could, you know, lay down some killer racing passes and stuff. But for, for me, Cardiff was more about the crew we were traveling with. There was me, Adam Anderson, Frank Kreml. Um, we just had such a blast over there. It was like being 15 years old again, just seeing the sights and trying to harass anybody we could that was on the team, no matter what team they were with. It was, it was just nothing but a good time. So you've been involved with the Australian monster truck industry for quite some time. Uh, can you tell us fans and especially me listening at home, how that opportunity came about and uh, what you've been doing there? Um, I guess how it came about is um, through, through Craig Christensen with Dragon Slayer and whatnot. Um, he'd been doing a lot of stuff with the, with the uh, guys over there. And then he got back into his own truck over here and just, I don't think could make it. So I don't know how he picked us as the one he recommended, but I thank, it, thank him for it every day. It's been a blast. Um, I've been over three times and I, if it wasn't for COVID, I hope I would have been invited back this year. Um, everybody there is so easy to get along with and the fans are awesome at the pit parties. We just, we just enjoy every aspect of the whole country. So I, I don't know how I got picked, but it, it's pure luck, I think. And I, I think we're a pretty good fit over there. I really like the truck they stick in. Um, I drove Extreme twice now and Convict once. The Convict one was kind of a tough showing. We had a lot of rain and it's kind of a mess that whole weekend. But uh, I feel pretty at home in the Extreme truck just probably because it's a, a Ford body, a Ford based kind of truck and it's got the blue chassis like maniac so once i put that helmet on and all i can see is a blue cage feels like home to me i have to ask you about jurassic town i'm pretty sure you know where i'm going with this but in 2021 uh, you teamed up with Team Thrower Monster Trucks to bring back Jurassic Attack after a 10-year hiatus. What was the motivation and reasoning behind bringing the truck back? Um, we were trying to do that for quite some time. Um, when, when Gary Schott used to drive for me, he left here with the intention of building a new killer truck. And he did get it finished and ran it a couple of years, but it just didn't get to that phase with putting the new body on it. And then he decided to pursue other things. Um, so the option was always in the back of our mind of, who we could team up and, and that's a pretty fine window with me. I, I'm pretty fussy on who's who I would trust with that name and that expectation to run the way we wanted it run. Um, coincidentally, it was while I was flying back from Australia a year ago that uh, 
Paul Jensen actually texted me with the idea. I talked to a couple other teams, but it didn't really go anywhere. And it seemed like either the teams were too big and didn't need something new or just didn't reach our standards. So he texted me right when I was in between flights coming back. And uh, I said, yeah, it's a possibility. Tell me more. And throughout the summer, we kind of put a plan together and, and a contract. And um, I, I think we found the perfect fit. They're going to be running two trucks later in the summer, both with Jurassic name on it. And I mean, Dave, he's killing it. And that thing, uh, Salt Lake rocked. Um, I haven't heard the results from this weekend yet, but they're out there. Um, I think he sat out last night, if I recall from what I was told, and probably has one or two shows yet this weekend. But I, I think it's a perfect combination. That body design had been one we'd been talking about probably since about 2006 of wow. uh, kind of bringing in that half robot feel. And uh, I think they nailed that perfect too. Absolutely. And the truck looks absolutely splendid. And kind of moving on uh, to that, that is the end of my questions. But uh, the fan questions are next. And kind of leading on with that, you sort of just talked about it. Uh, Max Silver wants to know, what are your thoughts on the new Jurassic Attack body and David Olfert behind the wheel? Yeah, I, I mean, there's so many things in that design that I, I can't even thank all the people that have had input in it. There's been um, fans that have sent us art over the years. There's some of the eye design, which uh, no, not many have seen yet because they couldn't run it at the Monster Jam show, but I'm sure it's coming for the others. Um, my son designed part of that when he was like 11 years old. And um, we just threw all these ideas at him and... Um, they kind of did a couple drawings and then refined it a couple times. And, you know, even when I first seen the actual finished artwork, I was really, really impressed, but it just doesn't do justice for how killer the, the rap actually turned out. I, I, I think they nailed it 100%. And, uh, I've known Dave for quite a while. I knew him when, uh, we used to race in his own town and he was just, a barely out of school and he's always been a go-getter and he put his dues in wrenching and i've always said if you can't wrench on a truck you can't make it go faster you can only ask someone else to make it go faster and if you can't tell them why it isn't going faster you're at a disadvantage so between him and paul driving the other truck later this summer um they're going to be a force that are tough to beat i think Absolutely. Uh, still talking about Jurassic Attack, Carl Coff, uh, Coffey wants to know, how difficult was it to maintain the body of Jurassic Attack as far as repairing any damage, airbrush, etc.? Um, it wasn't any worse than any other truck other than the actual airbrushing portion. We own the molds. We have the molds here. So if you tore something up, you know, you could stick the whole thing back in the mold and fix the pieces missing. Um, we actually only went through about four bodies in 10 years on that truck. Um, we were pretty good at repairing them. Um, as far as the airbrushing guys, they're, they're always handy. They're always helpful. Um, our first airbrush guy, who's still one of the best on the planet, um, he, he did a phenomenal job designing that. He does a lot of research. He, same with when he did the Maniac paint job. But uh, honestly, they were just way too nice to be on a monster truck and the abuse they seen. The first time that truck went over was actually in Dave's hometown. And uh, we were pretty bummed that night. But uh, after that, it's just another fiberglass body. You paint it, you fix it, you move on. Uh, Mike BMX6495 wants to know, which one of your trucks have you ran the longest? Uh, that'd definitely be the Maniac. Like I say, we started that name back in the Poland days, and we ran it for about five years. So it probably started in about 84. And I, the part of me regrets not driving Jurassic Attack more in the early years 
but uh, Maniac is the one I was at home with. I think I think I honestly just didn't want to be the first guy to bugger up that body, but uh, be able to blame someone else maybe. But then the, uh, one of the wake dri drivers, he uh, one of the brothers there, he hopped in my truck one weekend and put it on the roof even sooner. So <laughs> yeah, it didn't help either way. <laughs> Um, but that name's been around since about 84 and the monster truck since 89. So it, it, it probably has about a six year head start on, on Jurassic attack. And then, uh, the one truck was ran as young gun for about a year and a half or two years as well. And my final question for you, Don, is Josh, uh, Josh Bothwell wants to know, how did you find getting into monster trucks coming from Canada? Was there ever any border issues or anything? I know we were talking about that earlier, so can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, not really. Um, we've always had a pretty good uh, border relationship. I mean, uh, a lot of the guys that are local crossing an hour away, I used to play paintball with them in high school and stuff. And we always knew what we were all doing there. You know, I always go at it. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. Um, we actually had more troubles getting back into candy usually than, than into the U S because they figured we were buying something down there and bringing it back. And like I say, we always declared everything. Um, there's a few times where we thought it was going to hurt our scheduling list trying to get back. We had done a show in tech or, uh, Western Canada once, and then we had to be in Texas and then back to Eastern Canada. And they held us up for about two days going into the States, thinking we were maybe going to try and sell something down there. And once they seen that we're already booked back in Canada, it wasn't that big a deal. Um, they did kind of have us on a blacklist after that for about six months, just because we had gone to another border and they don't like that. But we had no option if we wanted to make it to the show we had to get so many miles closer that night or it wouldn't make wouldn't take place so um other than that one time not not too much instance pretty good either way well uh unfortunately that is the end of the fan questions and the podcast in general Thank you, everyone, so much for listening. Remember, if you want to follow my social media, it's at Monster Jam Historian on Instagram and Monster Jam Historian on YouTube. You can also follow the official weekly Monster Truck Podcast Instagram page at the Weekly MT Podcast on Instagram. Make sure to check out the Weekly Monster Truck Podcast Facebook page. And if there's any, uh, for more places to listen on, you can check out the YouTube page with the video version of the podcast. And uh, there's also... Uh, Spotify, Anchor, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. Uh, in true weekly Monster Truck podcast tradition, Don, is there anything or anyone you would like to shout out before we close off today's episode? Uh, not really. Just have people follow on uh, JurassicAttack.com. I try and keep sharing the pictures there that as they come to me and check out Team Throttle Monster. They got lots of updates there as well with their whole team. Uh, they, they're building some killer trucks. It's going to be a great year. And I hope to see Jurassic Attack uh, on the track, killing it in Monster Jam, as well as the other indie circuits very soon. I want to thank Don once again for coming on. And I want to thank you fans for letting me have the opportunity to talk to great drivers like Don. And uh, we'll be back to our regular scheduling next week. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening. Have a fantastic week, and keep on jamming. Bye, guys. It's time to jam.